Everyone, it's Ross, and uh, today's video, I want to show you guys the greenhouse. I want to show you guys how it's all looking right now, at this point of the year. Um, things really haven't woken up um, that quickly. It takes about a week, maybe even uh, 15 days, but here it is, and you can see there's a lot of green in here, particularly from these pomegranates, man. They just leaf out like nuts. And I'm out here right now filming for you guys because every day I have to come out here and open up this door because the heater keeps things at nighttime about 60 degrees. And then when the sun comes in about midday, even earlier than midday, sometime around 10, um, it really warms this greenhouse up. And temperatures right now, if I had a guess without looking at the thermometer, I would say temperatures are probably a almost 100 degrees right now. Um, you can see there's a lot of things leafing out and there's a lot of Braba in here, which I'm it's very surprised to see on a lot of these varieties that I wasn't really expecting. I have a feeling some of this may be um, like maybe an overwintered main crop, you know, a main crop that never really formed in time and they kind of just lay dormant in the tree. Like look at this one. This is strawberry verte. This is three figs two of which is in the same node, I have a really strong feeling that uh, one of these is a Breva and one of these is a main crop that was there from last year. I've, I've never really seen two Breva on the same node, so this is kind of really telling me the full picture. We also have things like LSU Scott's Black, which have three Breva on this branch, another maybe even four Breva on this branch here. Um, and that's not even the entirety of the tree. So uh, I don't, I've never seen so much Brava on one tree before. And if I take you guys around the back, there's actually a tree that you can kind of see through the, through the, the uh, plastic here. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but there's one, two, three back behind the branch, four, five, five Braba, six Braba up there as well on this one branch. And I can't even, I'm not even sure what tree this is. I think that St. Martin is supposed to be one of the hardiest varieties in existence, believe it or not. But uh, I think that's St. Martin back there just by knowing what my St. Martin tree looks like. But I mean, look at this foliage on this on this pomegranate. They all look like this at this point. And the pomegranates are always the first thing to wake up. You'll also notice that we did indeed take off the tarp on the top. And the tarp's here on the side just sitting here. Um, I don't foresee myself needing the tarp again. But if there is a night for whatever reason that dips down into like the mid-teens, then I'm probably going to want to put that tarp on there at night to keep this greenhouse more insulated. Um, we also had to come in here and tape down that window because it was pretty much exposed. You can see it's still exposed. The tape's only doing so much. But that's really not the biggest deal because I gotta come out here anyway and open this up, you know? So uh, this heater does shut off at the temperature I've set it at, but um, it seems to still put out a really small amount of air at higher temperatures, which really accelerates the heat that gets trapped in here, um, especially when it's already at 60, then the sun comes in. The sun's gonna easily raise the temperature in the greenhouse. If it's really strong, um, it's blasting on the uh, greenhouse all day, like there's no clouds. You're, you could probably expect easily 40 to 50 degrees increase in the greenhouse. So I'm trying to keep things somewhere around 85, I think is probably the best temperature. For waking these things up though, you may want to um, really blast the temperature to really say, all right guys, you got to wake up, you know? It's like kind of how I would say, you know, in, in like old movies, in like war movies where they play that trumpet, whatever the hell that trumpet music is. <laughs> and everybody just gets way up and it's like at the crack of dawn, you know, it's like, I don't know. But anyway, point is, 
it's kind of the same way with the temperature is that you're blasting them with this temperature and it gives them a nice little wake up call. I would say this greenhouse, we only woke it up. We started putting on the heater with the intention of waking the trees up sometime around the 5th of March. And today is like the 19th. So we haven't really even, they haven't really even done anything. It hasn't really been that much time. I mean, it really does take about a week, week and a half for those trees to wake up. So now that they've waken up, they're really gonna start taking off. What we need to do soon is come in here with the water um, sometime probably in the next two weeks and just give everything a nice squirt down, especially if things are getting too hot in there. So that's really it. Um, I guess for the figs on the patio here, this little experiment that we're doing this year, we're taking out the figs out onto the patio. These are dormant, dormant trees, except some of these have kind of broken bud. You can see that right there. They're trying to break bud, it seems like, but they haven't really done anything. And I think it really is because the nighttime temperatures here are very cold still. And because those nighttime temperatures, even they're even below 32, um, it's not really making a big difference in when these trees wake up. So that's really good. I want them to stay dormant for a while. Um, you know, kind of do their thing here on the patio and hopefully they're gonna wake up sometime around late April you know, May 1st at the latest, and we'll have a really nice way of bringing these trees out here onto the patio. Someone had mentioned that, uh, I think in the video that I did, someone had said, I did this before and it didn't work out for me. Um, a lot of my trees got hit with the cold and I lost a lot of growth uh, because I'm assuming that person, their trees had leafed out and because their trees had leafed out and started growing yeah of course if you let those trees that have active growth on them leaves swollen buds if you let that get hit with a really cold temperature you're going to lose some growth you're going to lose that that growth's also going to be damaged too so do yourself a favor and don't do this if your trees are awake i made that abundantly clear in that video so anyway guys Thank you so much for watching this one. Um, we'll catch you for tomorrow's video, all right? You guys can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter now. We have a whole bunch of different content over there, as well as the website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. We have a nice blog post there. We also have consulting services that we're offering up people. Uh, there's all kinds of links there to the plants, to the cuttings, to the, you know, all kinds of things that are being sold. Um, we are selling right now, actually, we're going to be selling some cuttings and we're also going to be selling some raspberry plants that we dug up. They're already on Figbit, the, the raspberry plants. I need to get the, um, I need to get the cuttings though on Figbit and you guys can go there from the link in the description. We're going to have all kinds of varieties here that I'm going to trim and the reason I'm going to trim them is because I've realized for this storage area here, it's only so tall and I'd rather have them kind of branch out from a lower point because of that. So we're gonna end up pruning these guys quite heavily, I think even lower than what some of these are and get them to branch out this spring at a lower height. And that means a lot of cuttings for you guys, for whoever wants to be grafting, whoever wants to do late season rooting, if you wanna do outdoor rooting, you guys can do this. So. Alrighty, I'll talk to everyone soon. I'll see you for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.